wanted to take you along tonight is um, getting ready to start my cucumbers and squash and watermelon. Got a couple of different varieties we're growing this year. I got some some seed from uh, Baker Creek. I've got some gray squash, zucchini squash. Got some black beauty zucchini squash. I had some seeds left over from, uh, actually I think these are from 2016. The uh, crookneck yellow squash usually does pretty well, so we're gonna try growing some of these again. And then, um, as far as cucumbers, I'm going with um, the Market Moore 76, which is kind of like um, basically the market standard. It says here that uh, produces real a real standard for uh, slicing cukes. Dark green, eight to nine inches. Great slicer, good yields, excellent flavor. So we'll see. Also got uh, some Boston pickling. I'm going to try those again for this year. And then uh, I thought I'd see if these seeds were still viable. These are from uh, 2014. And these are the straight eight cucumbers. It's kind of cool. This is a variety that my buddy Josh, he gave me seeds to these. Um, I think back in 2013, 2014. And uh, they did really well. And the cucumbers were anywhere from 8 to 12 inches long and just a big straight, basically what it is, straight 8. Good all-around cucumbers. So we're going to try, see if any of those are still good. I've got seeds that I saved from uh, last year, but I... I don't know, there's somewhere in the refrigerator, but I found, uh, still had plenty of the Art Combs uh, ancient cucumbers, cucumber seeds, so uh, we're going to go ahead and start some of those as well. So let me show you kind of what we got going on. So I've got my, uh, my potty mix. With some worm castings. We got some trays prepped from we when we are ready to transplant some things. But anyway, I've got uh, seven containers, and I will label them accordingly. And we're just going to start seeding these these containers. I'm going to fill the bottom of this with uh, probably about a inch or so of water we'll put the probe in one of the containers and then put a lid over it and it will probably take oh, a couple days for uh, things to sprout but things should sprout it's getting warm now so let's go ahead and uh, put the camera on the tripod here see if we can't reorient Curcubits, or you know, stuff that's in the family of uh, melons, cucumbers. I typically don't start until a couple weeks out from planting. We're a little bit behind schedule this year. <clears throat> so I'm actually starting these probably again about two weeks later than what I normally would, but it should work out. These sprout fairly quickly. So there's our uh, crookneck yellow squash seeds. And uh, so what we're going to do is just push them in here. And this potting mix is kind of damp. And 
I'm trying to space these out halfway decent. We'll save a few of those, but we'll try to start <clears throat> nine seeds there. Next, we'll do our uh, Black Beauty squash, bikini squash. As a general rule of thumb, you don't want to cover your seeds more than like the length of them. So, you know, I wouldn't put any more than like a quarter to half inch of uh, grow mix over these. Like I said, they sprout pretty quick. We'll do our uh, gray zucchini squash. I'd say I love um, zucchini squash, especially in the summer. When you fry it up in a skillet, you know, bread it and uh, fry it up, you know, little quarter inch discs. And then have some um, spaghetti sauce or marinara sauce to dip that into. That's like a meal in itself. Last year we happened to have the best um, We had the best curcubit uh, harvest of um, pretty much any year since we had the garden here in Ohio. I just, we really got quite a bit. Really didn't start dying down until <clears throat> oh, mid to late July when the uh, squash bugs started showing up you know and we were fortunate there were a couple times we caught them and before they really did a lot of damage we were able to kill quite a few of them but eventually um, they got the squash but if you grow enough squash plants um, It's not really an issue. Typically you end up with, with way more squash than what you need or want. You know, the point that you get tired of it. <clears throat> and you start looking for opportunities to give it away. And we gave quite a bit of squash away this past season. As well as cucumbers. I think Frugal Prepper came out one night. He got, you know... Tom got enough that he could make his pickles. So hopefully we'll be able to do that again. I'm going ahead and uh, labeling all these before we get too far along. Again, just a little piece of electrical tape or uh, painter's tape. And a permanent marker to kind of label it. And then once we transplant everything, you know, I'll, we'll label each of the individual plants. 
And we had gray squash. There's a variety I thought about growing. This year is called uh, Lebanese White Marrow Squash. Usually did pretty well in the uh, the garden. I my little garden back in Indiana. But the one year we tried growing it here, not so much, and I haven't really made an attempt since then on that. It'll be interesting to see how these do, the straight eights, whether or not they sprout. I hope they do. Uh, last year, we were able to bring back um, the Tigger Melon. My daughter really wanted me to grow that, so we did. Do quite a few seeds here. And we ended up getting quite a few, quite a few little melons. And they taste okay. They got a little like uh, passion fruit and it's kind of single serving. It's kind of like a novelty melon. But pretty good. It's kind of cool having these seeds from uh, prior seasons. You know, it kind of brings back memories, you know, with kids and just different gardens we've had over the years. My uh, daughter tonight, so I took a half day of vacation to take care of some things at home and um, help my one daughter get her passport or apply for it anyway. And then I uh, got a bunch of uh, tomatoes potted up that were here at the house that are kind of extras for like friends and family. Uh, but I've got a daughter who is, she just got her learner's permit. It's driven maybe two or three times anyway. With much goading, they, I finally agreed that, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll let her drive my car. And uh, she did a pretty good job, actually. Actually, of all, all the kids so far, my... That are driving in my house. Uh, she's been probably the best one so far, at least on the initial drive out of Dad's house, or out to Dad's house. Let's flip this around. Okay. Just gonna spread these out best we can again because these seeds are a little smaller and planting a few more just in case. Baker Creek's usually pretty good. There's been a few varieties over the years where I got a kind of poor germination rate. But let them know, and they ended up sending me um, a replacement seed packet with, with uh, like another little freebie. So they're a good company, and they've always treated me right. Hey, and what do you know? There's Tom. You're just in time, man. I'm uh, I'm potting up my Kirk Cubits.
my squash, my cucumbers, man, I'm, I'm late this year. But I saw you've got, uh, looks like a lot of things going on. Did you upgrade your electrical fence or the, uh, the critter deterrent? Oh, you're a few days ahead then, man. And truth be told, I could have probably direct sowed these seeds and they'd probably be just, do just as well. I still, I, I need to order my onion sets this weekend. I'm way behind on that. I'm like a month behind on that. But the, uh, the garden's looking good. Everything's looking like real good this year. Let's see, did I get uh, everything started? I got two more varieties. Yeah, that's going to be hilarious when that critter does get zapped. I mean, hopefully we get to see that. That'd be hilarious. Speaking of critters, so my, uh, I got a good friend. They came over to visit tonight and um, he borrowed my live trap. I guess there's couple groundhogs that live underneath a, a beat-up garage, dilapidated garage next door. They had babies, so there's young ones in there, just a whole mass of groundhogs. So anyway, he's going to be trapping them and then basically harvesting them is, a, I guess, a humane way of saying that. But the, he actually will harvest the meat and then <laughs> actually cook the meat and eat it. Which I thought, man, that's crazy. I've never had groundhog, but he's like, yeah, we'll have to, I'll have to bring some groundhog over for you. And I was like, ah, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> but um, he was pretty excited that I had a trap, so he's going to trap some groundhogs. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. We Our big problem is rabbit rabbits and moles like we even have we have rabbits this year uh but they were outside the fence and the county killed them because there was a little rabbit nest and dad you know being retired he was at home and um the county was coming through one of their big moors and he talked them into driving down into the, the at least the garden half that's not fenced in they had like a foot of leaf mulch and um, so it went through there and all that well when we went out to pull out the Canadian thistle there's a couple dead bunny rabbits there's pieces of bunny rabbit that's <laughs> like so anyway I dig a hole pick up all those bunny pieces and carcasses and bury them i felt a little bad about it but then i was like you know you shouldn't have built your nest in my garden so so this is real cool i'll show you this my my uh, ancient watermelon these seeds are a different color look at that Yeah, I heard about your dog, man. That that sucks. You know, especially if they were a good dog. Oh, we got a dog right now, our miniature dachshund. I mean, she's a little rat. I mean, I'll, I'll miss her when she's gone, but then there's a part of me that's not going to miss her when she's gone. <laughs> if that, that's terrible. But, uh, She's just a little rat. Let's see here. Yeah, that sucks too. It costs that much to have the dog put to sleep. 
I mean, anymore, nothing's, nothing's cheap. It's crazy. So you guys going to get another dog? <laughs> I'm dropping seeds. So when you said, when they, did they give you a discount when you said, oh, wait, I got a gun? <laughs> well, let's see here. We got plenty of watermelon seeds, so we'll. We'll go ahead and start. Fair amount of these. Yeah. So which fur baby did that? Cause you have, you guys, you guys had a couple big dogs, right? You got two or you had two or was it three? I was thinking you guys had two big dogs. And then I seen or uh, saw like where you've been off work because it uh, was a pancreatitis or something. Oh. Well, everybody's getting older, that's for sure. Oh, that's cool, man. So that the that pancreatitis is that something like are you more or less over it or is it something that can come back on you? Plant a fair amount of these Mark and More cucumbers. Kind of see what pops up. Well, I'm glad they didn't. It wasn't like more severe than what it was. So, are you back to work yet, or are you still off because of the Percocet stuff? No, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I saw your pictures you posted, but I haven't watched any videos yet. I should. I should watch that. So there they are. Everything's nice and labeled, at least labeled well enough that I know the difference. So do you have pe you the stranger danger stuff? Did you have like people over at your house trying to like break into stuff or uh I 
Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah, it's funny. My uh, We're going to cover these with about a quarter inch. We're going to cover these up. I, I am, I'm getting to it. Covered up well enough that it's... These are sprout pretty good. Yeah, it's funny, my brother-in-law, he was saying, you know, uh, I guess they live over by, uh, was it Wittenberg? And, um, you know, the, I guess they graduated this past weekend and they put dumpsters, you know, different places in a truck, you know, for uh, donations and this, that, and the other. So when that guy started knocking on your windows and stuff, did you tell him to, did you let him see your gun and say, uh, hey, dude, what do you want? Yeah, I tell you anymore, it's crazy. So my my brother in law said at first, you know, it's looking kind of normal, like people were moving stuff. But then what he realized, what he could kind of see what's going on, is uh, these people were kind of playing pretend they were actually breaking into garages along the street and stuff, and they end up coming up to his house. And uh, trying to get in the garage, he opened the door and yelled at him, and that was enough to scare him off. But um, since then, they've moved their at least their valuable stuff inside the house. As I did. That's crazy, dude. You know, when we, uh, our first year over here, our house got broken into the garage and we lost, I don't know, four bikes. It's kind of traumatic. You kind of just feel violated, you know? It's like one, you know, that someone would have the nerve to even do that. Knowing there's people in the house and they could have woke us up, you know, had we heard the garage door. And I guess what happened was my better half left the garage door opener in one of our beater vans that was unlocked. So they just simply used that and kind of eased it up so it wouldn't wake anybody up. And the dog didn't alert us. Or if, they, if she did, we didn't hear what was going on. So anyway, it's just kind of one of those things. But yeah, when I mean, your house gets broken into, I mean, you just gives you a kind of terrible feeling about things and <clears throat> kind of like definitely colored things for us here, at least initially. Yeah, you know, so we lived at our old house. It was on a busy road, kind of not the best neighborhood. And uh, never had any issues. And then, you know, basically the first month or so, or second month we were over here, you know, get a bunch of stuff stolen. Like in a decent neighborhood that you wouldn't think you'd have any issues like that. But I don't know. Uh, since then, it's not been bad. We haven't had any issues, but that's crazy. So when that dude kind of came up to you, what? How'd you handle? I guess I should watch the video, huh? 
<laughs> We're watering these in now. I got, um, let's see if I can show you. Oh. Yeah, it could have been. Just taking this solo cup here. Watering this in enough so that maybe the seed coat start breaking down a little bit. pressure a little bit better. Need to get some water plumbed in here so that I don't have to keep working with the uh, gallon jugs here, but pretty good. Now what we'll do is we'll fill this up. Those pots will soak up a good good chunk of that. And we'll put our top on. Center that on the heat map. And we're we're good to go. Probably a couple days. We'll see. Yeah, I know man. I we don't own any like firearms here. But when we got, I don't know what, one, two, three, we got four vehicles, you know, which potentially is a deterrent for anyone coming by. I mean, it could be that they think, oh, there's a lot of people that live there, which there are, but um, maybe the only other thing that helps us is our neighbors that live next to us are like paranoid. They actually have like a little cardboard. I think you've seen it when you've come over here, but you look at their window and it says uh, neighborhood watch. It's like this homemade sign that they've got plastered in their window. And they, they watch. Yeah, done with the pot for the night. <laughs> but they kind of watch what everybody's doing. And so, uh, I don't know. I guess the the bright side of that is that they they do watch everything. Um, the other thing too, our little dog, now that she's older, she's more apt to bark. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, uh, this weekend, so we're in a wedding this weekend, and I talked to my dad tonight, I went over and visited with him. He's doing pretty good, he's got, he's halfway through his radiation treatments and so far handling it pretty well. It's not tiring him out a whole lot. Um, but he agreed to watch our little dog for a night because we're gonna be out for a while and she just doesn't, anymore doesn't do well by herself you know used to we could if we needed to go somewhere or not we could leave her but now she's she 
she's gotten pretty emotional in her uh, elder years and like will just start barking incessantly you know when she's left and it's almost like traumatizing to her now I don't know um, anyway dad's gonna keep the dog the one night so we're probably gonna be gone quite a while hopefully the uh, the dog will let him sleep um, she's got this technically collapsed trachea I guess some kind of condition that um, miniature dachshunds can get. Man, there's another squash bug in the grow room here. I'm going to have to kill another one. The challenge is going to be getting it off the wall. It's pretty high up. When we knock it down with a piece of this Harbor Freight stuff. Okay, that knocked it down. Now I just need to uh, kill it. I'll switch the camera around so you can see what's going on. It's on top of my, uh, my grow light. These little buggers are pretty uh, clever. Whoops. <laughs> Don't think he's going to live through that. I stunned him. They're like the worst pests. Yeah, I can spray them with some Raid. think it's still alive. Surprise, it's not stinking up. Maybe I, I knocked the, uh, the tar out of them before it could, like, spray. I don't know. We're going to crush them between my fingers now. This actually worked pretty good. It's like, wham. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, Dad's doing pretty well. Dog should should sleep. It's got this collapsed trachea deal where we just kind of have to be careful with her. We're like when she wears a collar or what we feed her, like she can't eat big chunk food. Like um, other than that, she's fine. But every once in a while has this kind of like smoker's cough and then like gags on herself like when she coughs like that and then she's fine. Um, so we'll see. See how things play out. It's got a lot to do. I've got a daughter that's graduated. Uh, we're graduating this year. And so we've got a lot of cleanup. Just, I don't know about you, but it's so busy and stuff like that that the yard work um, like just general upkeep on the house kind of gets relegated, you know, where like you don't, you kind of put it off or you, you're doing the bare minimum to, um, keep things looking halfway decent. And then maybe, I don't know, two, three times a year doing like a more thorough weeding slash trimming slash just general upkeep which is what we're going to be doing some this weekend too yeah we'll see i don't know um when that's supposed to start in like july or something which i still don't know how the government's going to pay for all that it's crazy but um Hey, I mean, we're going to invest it. I mean, most of that's going to be put back into the economy. So um, whatever they do send us, we'll, we'll be spending it, you know, on just 
who knows? I mean, maybe we're going to be spending on necessities with the way, like, the cost of everything is going up. I was reading, a, you know, we track everything, like, uh, groceries have definitely gone up um, in the last year, over the last year. And it's just crazy how much everything's going on. I think it's probably going to get worse. I don't know if you know, it's like on the Amazon shipments and stuff like that. Like it's getting more difficult to get things uh, because a logistical, you know, like the transportation networks are so tied up right now. And it's just difficult to get material um, there's just not enough equipment, one, to handle it, and, and then not enough people, like employees, to um, keep things going. So stuff that normally would be here next day or two days is taking like a week, at least on the Amazon stuff, it seems like. Um, so I don't know. It's going to be crazy, but yeah, I think we, we ordered, um, uh, so Samuel, he plays ball and his, he jacked up his thumb catching, uh, this, I guess two weekends ago. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, so we, we ordered him a thumb guard. That I guess it's custom molded where you take it out of the package and you put it on the thumb and kind of mold it around and it hardens to the shape and then it's like this solid guard then that keeps the thumb from like hyperextending or whatever when you're catching. Um, but it just came today, you know, and I think it was supposed to come on Monday. And it was a prime item, so it should have been here like next day or whatever. And I noticed on the delivery times now, they just give a span of time. They don't give us a specific date. It's like a span of time, like, well, it may come, you know, or maybe as late as this. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. But still not, not too bad, so... Anyway, I'm going to have to order some onion sets this weekend. I'm going to go to the Dixondale, Dixondale farm site, see what I can find. Um, get those planted. I've got plenty of tomato or uh, potato starts, so I won't need to order any of those this year. Um, we'll kind of see how things go, so... See anything else to show you down here while we're in the grow room? <laughs> Not much. Here's my seeds. I need to put those back in the fridge. And I need to replace this light. Ideally, I want to get another set of LEDs like this. Here, this light's worked out pretty good. Guess we could look at the tomatoes real quick. I'll see. Go outside. I got a new neighbor. He's from uh, Oregon. Moved in like two weeks ago. He's a pretty cool guy. So I don't know if you can see this or not. Let's see if it'll let me uh, enable the flash. There we go. So these are... Uh, What is this? San Marzano's. You get some true black brandy wines. Some black cherry tomatoes and Chadwick cherry. 
So these are extra from the, um, these are, I guess, varieties that have been, I guess, initially didn't sprout. Yeah, you have to let me know how those celebrities do. If you get some good ones, I have to save some seeds. Where you can see they're still... Still adjusting. That's pretty what come out of it. But they're doing good. I separated all these out today and then potted them up. Uh, yeah, so it'd be difficult to save seeds in if it's a hybrid, like it won't be, uh, may not be true to type, depending. Oh, that's cool. I'll have to... I'll have to research that a little bit. Maybe experiment and do some hybrids. Alright, man. Well, hey. It's been... I'm glad you stopped by. I'm gonna have to uh, watch your video here later on. I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. Get things um, going upstairs. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I mean, it's not funny, but... It <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, I'll show you this. Here's all my... Uh, my mint lighter stuff that I got from LDS Prepper. This actually, I got this all last year, but I got enough nutrient packs there. I mean, that'll make 50 pounds, 100, basically 125 pounds of a uh, weekly feed. So I'm pretty well set on that. Yeah. <laughs> I know you got a couple years worth. It really doesn't take much either, weekly feed. I mean, I, I've... Maybe go through... 25... At most, maybe less than 50 pounds... Of plant food it's it's probably about 30 pounds of plant food a season which really isn't that much at all when you consider all things I mean literally you're just putting what is a two tablespoons or something per square foot yeah and it does work I mean it basically supplements I'm not feeding them enough <laughs> yeah may, maybe I'm using more than that it's probably it's probably at least 50 pounds and I'm kind of <laughs> uh... actually I think the way to do it and I think the way um, that Jacob Mintlider would do it is he'd make it in a constant feed. Like he'd have these 55-gallon drums of stuff and then um, had his little irrigation system set up and had it all piped in. I think that's kind of how he was doing it. I'd, I've debated, you know, do I experiment, maybe make up a little irrigation system 
you know, a bit lighter style. Oh. But I don't know. I think if we do that, I'll probably just do. <laughs> yeah. I'll probably, if I do any kind of irrigation, just get like drip tape or something. And then um, when I want to fertilize the plants, probably do it by overhead watering. Then as much rain as we get, I mean, really, we've not. Last season, there were only a couple weeks where Dad was having to water. Um, but most of the season, we were getting regular rains. And it was fine. So we'll see. But, uh. I'll have to check out your video and then uh, catch up with you again, man. So, I guess have a good night and we will, uh, I'll catch you on the next one.